Hi, I hope everyone is having a great, great week. Um, we have a good lesson again this week. Our lesson title is Jonathan Attacks the Philistine Outpost. And our lesson comes from 1 Samuel, the 14th chapter, the 1st through the 13th verse. Let us have a moment of prayer. Father, we come to you today. Thank you for everything you've done in our lives. We ask now, God, that you give us a heart to hear your word today. Give us strength to carry out the, what we learn in your lesson today. We ask all this in your son Jesus' name. Amen. So let's just, it's, it seems like it's not a lot of verses, but the verses are kind of long. So let's just go ahead and jump into our lesson. Our less, um, let's read the first seven verses just to break the, the lesson up a little bit. And so let's read verses 1 through 7. Now it came to pass upon a day that Jonathan, the son of Saul, said unto the young man that bare his armor, Come, and let us go over to the Philistines' garrison, that is, the other side. But he told not his father. And Saul tarried in the uttermost part of Gibeah under a pomegranate tree, which is in Mingren, and the people that were with him were about 600 men. And Ahiah, the son of Ahitabah, Ishbod's brother, the son of Phinehas, the son of Eli, the Lord's priest in Shiloh, wearing eph an ephod, ephod. And the people knew not that Jonathan was gone. And between the passages by which Jonathan sought to go over unto the Philistines, garrison there was a sharp rock on one side and a sharp rock on the other side and the name of the one was Boziz and the name of the other Sina. The forefront of the one was situate northward over against Mishmash and the other southward over against Gibeah. And Jonathan said to the young man that bare his armor come and let us go over unto the garrison of these uncircumcised. It may be that the Lord will work for us, for there is no restraint to the Lord to save by many or by few. And his armor bearer said unto him, Do all that is in thine heart. Turn thee, behold, I am with thee according to thy heart. So we see some names in this, uh, this first seven verses of the lesson. Jonathan, in our lesson title. And in the, the first verse, we, we find out a little bit about who Jonathan is. He is the son of Saul. Saul is the first king of Israel. So he's, he's Saul's son. And he has someone with him. He has an armor bearer. Somebody that is literally carrying his armor for him. Who assists him in battle. And so Jonathan tells his armor bearer, let's go to the Philistine outpost. So let's go where the Philistine army is. That's what he tells his armor bearer. But notice in the, the verses, so he doesn't tell his father that he's, he's planning on doing this, but he tells his armor bearer. Saul, at this point, he's chilling under a pomegranate tree. And he, it says that he has some folks with him. He has 600 men, and he got the priest, Ahijah, who is clothed in his priestly garments and all these people are around Saul but no one notices that his son Jonathan has gone so Jonathan he leaves why would Jonathan leave without saying anything to his father or anybody in his father's camp well we, we don't know for sure but we can kind of maybe put some context clues maybe Saul's leadership was already becoming a question. Did Jonathan not have faith in his own father's leadership? That's the reason it could have been. Or perhaps that um, Jonathan thought his father would not even want him to go because he would have thought it was something that was foolish for two people to try and go up against uh, an army when he got 600 people here and everybody should be more protected if they're together. We don't really know. But what we do know is that there was no communication between Saul and Jonathan as Jonathan headed out to do this. 
So we get a description of where the Philistines are camped at. It seems to be a rocky area. That would be a military um, strategy to put yourself where you can see your enemy coming over the rocks. Or even pers persuade the enemy to not come to you. It's an obstacle for your enemy to come to you. So Jonathan, he, he, he's going over these, to, for him to get to these Philistines, he's got to go over this rocky obstacle terrain to get there. So Jonathan tells his armor bearer something else um, in verses verse 6 and 7. We see Jonathan telling him, let's go get these uncircumcised. Uncircumcised. It is um, a way of distinguishing, distinguishing the Hebrews and the Gentiles. Because circumcision was something that was commanded for the Hebrew, for the children of Israel. So, he's telling him, we're about to go get these uncircumcised people. And perhaps the Lord will help us. Nothing can stop us if with the Lord's help is what Jonathan is telling his armor bearer. He can, the Lord can win no matter what the size of the enemy is. So notice Jonathan's armor bearer's response in verse 7. He tells him, do what you think is best. I will go with you wherever you see fit, whichever way you think is best for us to go. The armor bearer has complete trust in Jonathan's vision of what they're going to do and his leadership. So let's, let's keep going and read uh, the rest of our verses, and that's verses 8 through 13. Then said Jonathan, Behold, we will pass over these men, and we will discover ourselves unto them. If they say unto us, Tarry until we come to you, then we will stand still in our place, and will not go up unto them. But if they say thus, Come up unto us, that we, then we will go up. For the Lord hath delivered them unto, unto our hand, and this shall be a sign unto us. And the both of them discovered themselves unto the garrison of the Philistines. And the Philistines said, Behold, the Hebrews come forth out of the holes where they had hid themselves. And the men of, of the garrison answered Jonathan and his armor bearer and said, Come up to us and we will show you a thing. And Jonathan said unto his armor bearer, Come up after me and for the Lord hath delivered them unto the hand of Israel. And Jonathan climbed up upon his hand and upon his feet, and his armor bearer after him, and they fell before Jonathan, and his armor bearer slew after him. So we see Jonathan, he, he gives his armor bearer some instructions about what they're going to do. So he tells them, if the Philistines, if they say, come up and fight, we're going to go up and fight. They say, wait till we come to you, we're just going to sit. That will be a sign from the Lord oh, for us, for us, for what we're going to do. So, they make themselves known to the Philistines. And guess what the Philistines say? They say, come on up. <laughs> so, Jonathan and his armor bearer do exactly that. They see it as the sign from God that this is what God wants them to do. So, Jonathan also declares that the Lord hath delivered them into the hand of Israel. He hasn't even really fought yet. He's gotten there, but he's already making a declaration of what the Lord is going to do. He knows that God has already given him help in this battle. So Jonathan, he kills the Philistines in the front and his armor bearer gets the ones in the back. So if you read the remainder of the, the chapter, you'll find out that Jonathan and his armor bearer, they actually wind up killing 20 people. And which this causes a panic in the Philistine camp and it ultimately leads for Israel to have victory over the Philistines. So let's look at some lesson takeaways. First of all, with God's help, you can achieve a lot with the little. Jonathan and his armor bearer are an army of two. We don't know exactly how big the Philistine camp was. We know that they were able to kill 20. So even that is a high ratio for two people against 20. So in our lives, when we start to think about what we have and we think we can't do things, ask God for help. 
with his help, he can take that little bit and make it a lot. So let's look at another um, lesson takeaway. We should be able to hear and sense the word of God. Jonathan knew to go to God for help. And he looked for a sign for what God would want him to do. So when he heard um, the Philistines say, come on up, he viewed, viewed that as a sign from God. Those are God's word giving him the direction on how to handle this battle. Are you studying God's word so that you can get direction on how to handle the battles in your life? Are you in the church family where you're hearing the word of God so that you can learn and experience who God is and so that you can handle the mishaps of life? That is a, the second takeaway I have for the lesson. The third takeaway is in leadership, communication is key. We see Saul. He doesn't have any communication with his own son. We see, see that in the lesson, his son didn't even bother to tell him about his plans. There's no communication between the two. No one in Saul's camp is looking out for Jonathan. There's no communication about the son of the king. But we do see clear communication between Jonathan and his armor bearer. Jonathan gives him a clear vision of what God is wanting them to do. He gives him the words that they will listen for. So Jonathan is clearly communicating with his armor bearer what to do and what to listen for. So that is our lesson for today. Next week we will move on to 1 Kings, the 21st chapter, the 17th through the 29th verse. And we'll be discussing Elijah rebukes King Ahab. And so I hope you have an awesome, awesome week. For those of you who believe in the power of prayer, I ask that you pray for my church family. We are experiencing a very difficult time right now. Um, we have problems with our pastoral leadership. And it has gotten very difficult is, is the word I would use. Um, and... When you know that there's a, a leadership problem and it's not being addressed by the leader and the church membership knows that it's time for a change, it is often a difficult thing to get that change to occur. So that is where we are and it is very hurtful, it's very painful to go through. And we can use all the prayers that we can get. I thank you all and I hope you have an awesome, awesome week.